What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a refreshed edition of CBS Sports HQ. I'm Chris Williamson, joined alongside by the one and only Joe Musso. And Thursday, NBA playoff seating became a bit clear, but taking center stage, Joe, one of golf's most prestigious tournaments. I was going to say, where are, you, where are you taking me? Because I'm only going one place on Thursday of the Masters. The promise of Springs renewal is upon us. Opening round of the 88th playing of the Masters on Thursday, the golf world reuniting on the game's most sacred grounds. The only problem with spring is that weather comes with it. Two and a half hour delay to start Thursday, but then it was go time and you don't get going at Augusta until the legend show. Gary Player, Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson offering your ceremonial tee shots. And there is the Golden Bear, your most decorated Masters champion. And with that, we begin. Tiger Woods, one green jacket fewer, but great to have the big cat back. The five-time champion looking for another note of history. If he makes the cut, would be 24 straight at the Masters, would be a standalone all-time record. And here he is at the first with less than driver. Loves it. Welcome back, Cat. Second shot into number one. This hole that has offered fits in the early onset of rounds. No such issue for Woods on this day. From a buck 70 to eight feet, and he would convert the flat stick. Never been an issue. Tiger, one under through one. Why stop now? He would give it back at the fourth, but then at the par five eighth, another opportunity from four feet. Back to red numbers, using the right side of that cup. Tiger, part of the group that will be back on the course early Friday. Round suspended due to darkness, made it through 13 holes, but still in red numbers. Tyrrell Hatton, back in the mix after defecting to other tours, but Hatton, how about your shot of the day from 196 to the bottom? Pulls the string on it for an eagle two at the par four fifth. He's three under through 14 holes. Patrick Cantlay still efforting his first major title. It was a spotty day for Cantlay here, one over at 17, but you want a shot in the arm? How about jar one? Another eagle two. Cantlay collecting the first eagle at the 17th hole at the Masters since 1998. It was DL3 then. It's Patty Cantlay now. How about now being the time for Rory McIlroy? Looking to become the sixth player ever to complete the career Grand Slam. Nine times before he's tried to get it done here at the Masters. His 10th try at the Grand Slam. Perhaps this is the time McElroy on form at moments this year and this round. A bit of an up and down day for Roars who would make birdie at 14 but then a bogey there at 17 as he punches one over the back of the green. Finished one under his first opening round at the Masters under par since 2018 so perhaps a step in the right direction. The reigning Masters champion John Robb looking to become the first to repeat since Tiger in 01 02. Remember last year it was a four putt bogey a double bogey at the first no such issues this go around but issues came later in the round as he finds the right side some pine straw issues at the par 4 18th a little shaky with the driver on Thursday he'd bogey there and finish one over just eight of 14 in fairways hit Bryson DeChambeau missed back-to-back -back cuts at the Masters but was rolling on Thursday DeChambeau of current Crusher's fame rolls one in there at the very next hole, makes it back-to-back -back birds with a 10-foot putt at the par 5, 15th. Then at number 16, the par 3. You know what you got to do, throw it on the right side, let it come back to that hole location from a buck 65, leaning on it and loving it. Just a foot and some change under the hole. DeChambeau would roll that in to get to 6 under. You can't win it on Thursday, but Bryson giving it his best effort at 17. The unlikely birdie from 31 feet. Bryson DeChambeau, the pace car, seven under. His lowest score relative to par in any major round of his career. Into the clubhouse with a three-shot lead, but there were golfers still on the course. Scotty Scheffler, ever heard of him? World number one, giving chase to that seven under number. 18 feet there to the bottom at the 6th, then at the par 3, 12th. Come on. Back bunker supposed to be issues. No issue for Scheffler, who holds out for another birdie, moves him to 3 under, wasn't done. 
Next hole caught a break there, hung up on the berm, turned it into birdie to four under. Scheffler heating up the par 3 16th, taking the dead aim approach. Well, that works too. Moved Scheffler to six under, just one shot out of, off of Bryson DeChambeau, who went into the clubhouse with a lead at three, but Scotty Scheffler methodical in his dismantling of any and all golf courses. Here at Augusta National, the one-time Masters champion efforting his second Scheffler, six under, one off the pace of Bryson DeChambeau, and still your favorite at the Masters. Let's take you out to the majestic Augusta National, where our CBS Sports Golf analyst Kyle Porter and Rick Gaiman are standing by. Fellas, great to see you after a day full of golf. And let's start right there at the top with Bryson DeChambeau, a 7 under 65, seemingly out of nowhere. So I guess I'll just pose it that way, KP. Where did this come from? Well, he's been playing good golf. You know, he, he, we haven't seen a ton of it because mm -hmm. he's been on, on the Live Golf Tour. But um, I, I think what's surprising, Rick, uh, it's not necessarily that he shot a great score. It's that he hasn't been very good at this golf course. Right. And that's not necessarily what we thought was going to happen six, seven, eight years ago when he comes out as an amateur and is really moving the ball all over the place at Augusta National. He's been pretty bad since then. That 2016 finish uh, as an AM, as the reigning USAM champion, still has best finish ever at Augusta National. So he's trying not only to win the tournament, but just to improve on his best finish, which came as an amateur uh, eight years ago. So I, it, it's, it's surprising in the sense that he hasn't been good at this course, but it's not surprising in the sense that he's been playing pretty good golf worldwide leading into this Masters. Yeah, and the good golf that he's been playing worldwide has been, has been well-rounded. He is not just trying to bomb and gouge every golf course in the world. He's doing it in a little more consistent manner. And KP, I don't know if you heard uh, after the round, it was a very different refrain from Bryson DeChambeau. He talked about the need for placing the ball in the correct spot at Augusta National and playing to certain positions and taking what the golf course is going to give you. Yes, yes, Bryson, that's right. That's exactly <laughs> how you get it done. This is not uh, a par 67 where you bomb and gouge and you take it up different fairways and create your own angles like he has tried in the past. So maybe Bryson has had a little bit of a, a strategy change and that's allowing him to have a little more success. He also clarified that he's in the golf phase of his career and not awesome. the uh, mad scientist or <laughs> beefing up phase. So it's good to know that a golfer is in the golf phase of his career. Uh, yeah, not long removed are we from VJ Singh standing behind him at Augusta watching him try and <laughs> test the back limits of the practice area. But Bryson out in front. I'm reminded of the 66 day one in Rochester a year ago. Finished T4. Never really scared the lead. We'll see if he can stay atop this leaderboard. But it's going to be quite the test because Scotty Scheffler once again methodical in his excellence. Bogey free. Six under 66. I mean, we're running out of adjectives here, guys. How does he continue to exceed even our loftiest expectations, Rick. It, it was brilliant. I mean, it was so easy. He got a couple of uh, good breaks. He took advantage of, of, of each one. But we were we were in his uh, press conference, his interview afterwards, and he talked about uh, two specific things. He talked about the way he played the par fives. You got to make the, the birdies on the fives. He did exactly that. And then he made three more birdies on par threes. He described that KP as, as stealing, and, you know, taking a couple that he probably shouldn't have. And I worry about the rest of the field if Scotty Scheffler is stealing strokes on this golf course <laughs> because he doesn't need the help. He doesn't need the benefit of the doubt. He does not need any leg up. He's by far the best player out here and now he even thinks he's getting away with a few. Yeah, he, he got a couple breaks too. You know, the, the break on 13, the ball staying up on the bank. He called it uh, extremely fortunate uh, which it was. He makes a four from there. Could have easily been a six. You know, Scotty, I, I was really intrigued Joe. Uh, he said something earlier in the week. He said, hey, my coach, uh, I believe his name is Randy Smith, said, when, he told me when I was 15, hey, I don't care if you're the best player in the world when you're 15. I want you to be the best player in, your, in the world when you're 25. And guess what? He became the best player in the world when he was 25 years old, March of 2022. So uh, I think what that has taught Scotty, I asked him this afterwards, it is, hey, patience and discipline and things like that, the long view, that those things pay off. And that's what you have to have. It's a different 
uh, window of time, 10 years versus four days of a major championship, but you're still taking the long view in a major week rather than, as Rory's talked about in the past, trying to win the tournament on your first hole or your first round. Scotty's not even thinking about Sunday yet, but he is setting himself up for uh, what would be a second green jacket in, in three years. He collected that first green jacket as the world number one. Here he is atop the world once again, and Carding his best round ever at a Masters on this Thursday. As Rick Gaiman said, scary and best of luck to the field. Let's talk <laughs> about that field, though, because we have plenty of golf out in front of us, and we've seen a number of names lurking, even surging at moments up this leaderboard. We've seen a group at four under, as we are not just done with 18 holes yet. But KP, as you take a look at the rest of the storylines that are alive here heading into Friday, who steals a little bit of attention away from those two at the top? Yeah, I, I think a couple guys. I, th I think Max Homa uh, is very interesting. At, at uh, I believe he's at four under going into not his second round, but his second day. He'll finish up his his first round on Friday, early on Friday, uh, alongside Tiger Woods and Jason Day. I think uh, I think Will Zalatoris uh, is is pretty fascinating. He he uh, took it deep at one point. I think he was four under, dropped back a little bit at the end of the day. But he's just such a such a menacing uh, major championship player. Uh, and, and he talked after his round about you know the more he plays this golf course, the more he plays major championship golf. Um, the more he learns, and, and not necessarily the easier it gets, but he just he feels like he has more weapons at his disposal over time, especially at a place like Augusta National. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great nominations here. I mean, even Nikolai Hoygaard making a run. He has not finished his round. He was a Ryder Cupper who won a big event on the DP World Tour at the at the end of the year. He's trying to enter a new phase of his career, but I, I do want to echo the Will Zalatoris stuff. Yeah. I mean, he has been a big game hunter. Uh, doesn't have the trophy to show for it yet, but this is his ninth trophy around Augusta National and he's finished inside the top 14 after every single one of those rounds. He's mm. always in the mix around here. He's done it again and uh, I'm very excited to see what he does if he can finally break through and capture one of these. As the fellas said, not a full 18 in the books for everybody. About a third of the field going to be up and at him early including Tiger Woods who just made his way about amen corner but there is some statistical data out in front of us here that could let us know where we are going or who we are going with no champion has been outside the top 33 through 18 holes tiger woods was obviously in 05 the champion that came from the furthest back every champion since 2006 has been inside the top 11 following their first round